Okay, so we kind of alluded yeah. to table formats for here. So let's just to, to almost get, make sure we have our audience along the same space. These are like <laughs> late out formats. So everyone, yeah, I'm sure everyone here has heard of Apache Iceberg, Apache Hoodie, maybe even um, uh, Delta uh, Lake. But yeah. the one we mentioned here is the Apache Paimon, which is kind of like is kind of the fourth horseman for one of a better thing uh, in this little um, kind of little fun bit of cooperation, as I will call it amongst you know, the open formats. And the interesting thing here is that like, this is a different way to store data. This is the kind of the compromise we make because data got very big and very expensive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so expensive. Yeah. 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 It's just, you know, it's just coming from, you know, Apache Flink, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the storage itself, you know, it is a, a problem that, you know, used to be really difficult to bypass. Right. So, yeah. uh, right. You use like, like high performance disk, and that is something that's really, uh, uh, really, really expensive, right? And the format, right? The formats of the data that's actually stored in, right? And now with kind of with the Apache Pyman, we have that, you know, that kind of like the best of, of both worlds, right? You have streaming, you know, you have the data freshness, you have the incremental compute, you know, that's from uh, the Flink world, I would say, yes. you know, the streaming world. And then you have the, the data governance, and you know you're storing data in parquet files, right? Uh, so you have all of your data as a single copy, right? You have host multiple compute engines on top, right? And that's yeah. great for data governance, right? And also, you know, it runs on object storage on parquet files is a lot more cost effective. So I, I love that, you know, the best of the both. Me too. You no know, from Apache Python. Me too, because like Paimon kind of came from like, so if you look at the various like open table formats, a lot of like everything's been influenced by the history that came before them, right? So yeah. like if we scroll back, so big data, the term was coined by Gartner in 2001 with kind of three Vs. There was velocity, volume, and variability. Uh, they added three more to make it sillier because that's the first thing analysts always do is they make something cool sounding and then they add too many extra words. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it was a really kind of insightful post because the volume is kind of a big kicker and the velocity means you've got to have, I, it's either going to be really big or and or really fast, but also kind of weird data. So when we get to this kind of open table formats, right, a lot of them came from the Hive world. So this is back in Hadoop days. Hive was a kind of a nice query engine to find Parquet files in HDFS. Very well thought out at the time, but with many limitations. Fundamentally, it was never meant to be real time. So yeah. as we evolved forwards, Iceberg was effectively looking at this and going, what if Hive but better in every way? Yeah. So they just took all the metadata. Hive. Yeah, they, they basically said, took the yeah. metadata layer and said, we're going to separate these out and say, not just storage and compute separate, but how about we separate storage, compute, and metadata? Very nice innovation, quite clever, but still just a Hive++. plus plus. Then the next thing that came along was kind of like hoodies approach which was how about we put a crunching engine in there to do the merges for us right yeah. and that's fine and it can do a lot of useful stuff but paimon kind of decided to say let's step back a second we want warehouse like performance or at least close to but so what do we do let's build like a warehouse and treat our parquet files like their level runs on an lsm tree itself mm -hmm. metadata is still separate but it kind of gives you that kind of ability to have exactly like this with primary key indexes, partial update yeah. without too much cost. And you could have a merge engine going behind the scenes to allow you to have the freshness you want. You don't have to do merge on read. You can do merge on write or just continuous. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. 